Blau und weiß sein Leben lang. Hallo Leute, willkommen zum einzigen Schalke Podcast auf Englisch. Officially the world's only English Schalke Podcast. Welcome to episode 155 of Schalke America. I'm your host, Richard Carmen. Joining me as always, co-host Jack Mangan for a happy victory Monday. How are we doing, my friend? Five in a row. Five on the bounce. Victory Monday after victory Monday. Um... We had said for much of the season that, you know, if we want to make a serious run at promotion at some point, this team's going to have to um, show some consistency and, and go on a go on a tear for a bit um, and string together some results. And we had been waiting on it and um, it, it was looking like it was never coming in, in sort of the final days of Gramatis. And then, you know, kind of unexpectedly under Buskins here five in a row and suddenly top of the table. Um, with four remaining and very much in a position to kind of control our destiny now. Um, who knows how long we can keep it going, but uh, pretty dramatic turnaround in, in a short short period of time. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got five wins in a row. It's uh, unreal. We played a, a top four team this weekend in Darmstadt and, and beat them convincingly score-wise. Uh, officially, four games left. If we win three of our last four, we're getting promoted. That's a big if, right? It's a gauntlet to, to end us, right? Werder Bremen, top spiel next week. We have St. Pauli left. We have Nuremberg last game. And Sandhausen, oh, by the way, with Katuchu. So, you know, it's not easy by any stretch. But uh, five wins in a row. I mean, I think this picture sums how we all feel right now. And it's a picture of Kaminsky just fired up after the game. Um, yeah. Big win. Big win. We needed that win, right? Uh we weren't sure. I mean, we obviously we've been playing, we've been getting the results lately, not necessarily playing our best football, but this win this weekend, a chaotic game, uh, big result. Yeah. And, and, you know, something I kind of saw online being talked about, um, which is just kind of interesting to think about to some extent is, you know, over the past couple of seasons, um, the final few seasons that we were in the top division, um, it was difficult to be a player at Schalke at times and you know we sometimes people question the spirit or whatever and everything but like this team right now is is comprised of largely of lone players and people that are not in long-term commitments um with the club and so to see the kind of effort they're putting in and how excited they are about like the performances like it's it's a squad that has a winning mentality um like they you know so it's just it's just interesting to see because you know you would think um, you know, maybe there'd be a little bit more of that confidence or, or swag or whatever you want to say would have been present over the past couple of seasons with, you know, people that were ostensibly more committed. But um, yeah, fascinating. And uh, it's a great position to be in. I didn't think we'd be here, but here we are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I see uh, Eustace, William and Doug in the house. Good evening, gentlemen, or good morning, I guess, to you in Germany, if you're watching this at 2.30 in the morning. Uh, yeah, did not think we'd be in this position, but it's good that uh, we said that. It's funny because before this gauntlet started, we said we had to win all those games before because, you know, the gauntlet would be hard. And all of a sudden now we're five in a row in the middle of this gauntlet. Um, and results are falling our way at the moment, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, our friends over at uh, Nuremberg did us a favor against Bremen. Uh, one one in that game. That was a crazy game as well. Uh, watch that game live. And um, yeah, Bremen struggling as of late to win a game. We've got a nice two point cushion against them next week, but we'll get to that soon. Let's uh, get to the game at hand because wild game it was. And let's uh, Derek Dirt in the house. Happy Easter Monday. Happy Easter Monday. Uh, nice W. But let's get to the lineups in this one. So same lineup as last week, right? Toronto up top. Salazar, Bulter, and Trexler behind him. Lots of Itakura to start in the double pivot with Chalanolu, Kaminsky, Tiao, and Matriciani once again with Frazzo on goal. Uh, thoughts on the lineup? Second week in a row we saw this last week. Wasn't too bad. Um, how do you feel? How did you feel? 
Um, I mean, I'm fine with it. Uh, I mean, it's pretty clear at this point that we're we seem to be at least committed to this sort of four two three one shape. Um, this version of it, the version that we saw last week, once again, we think I think make more sense than uh, the version that we saw three weeks ago, where you had you know Zawatsar playing centrally and lots of playing and more of that you know winger position or what have you. Um, uh, you know, direct start getting this consistent run on the side. Um, and, uh, you know, Itakura has been solid there. Uh, you know, if you switch, if you, if you want to switch to a back four for what it can, you know, provide you in other areas of the game, but you don't have to drop somebody like Itakura, you know, cause he's that good of a player. It's a great solution and he's continued to play well. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, once again, still not our first choice, you know, left or right back. Um, but as long as we can get results with them in the game, it's good to get them running games, particularly in, you know, a pressure situation, which is a promotion battle right now. So good for their education and edification as young players, I suppose you could say. Um, they like trying to know, you know, I mean, so like, yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah, it's, 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 it's fine. I mean, it's not optimum, but it's, it's been working the last couple of games and, you know, roll with it. Yeah. And it looks like we'll probably have to have some kind of change next week. Uh, lots of picked up an injury early in this one. He came off. It looked like a really serious injury. Initial reports, at least from Andreas Ernst, is that it's a, a serious bruise injury, not a fracture. So it's not going to be a long-term injury. But how long is he out? I don't know, one or two games. We'll find out here shortly. But we've seen Flick. Flick's done the job just fine, right? Sure. You just feel bad for lots of the guys yeah. made a class this season. I mean, like oh he just stops and starts. And this this last couple of games was like the first – it really it was only what sixty minutes, and then like a ninety maybe or something like that. Like so, two quick matches or something. But that's almost that almost feels like the best run of games he's had. I know this season know. so far. Now he's he's out again. So yeah, hopefully it's not a long term thing. Um, I'm still not entirely sold on him needing to be a, a starter, but I would obviously rather have him available than not, and feel bad for him that you know he made this move here, um, and hasn't really been able to uh to make the most of it in terms of his uh, minutes on the pitch. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, one guy who. People already talk about in the chat, and he's he was on the bench. Andreas Vinheim back on the team on the bench, and we got to see a little bit of him in this game, uh, which is good sign, right? Uh, we want to know Ole on again, but uh, and know Cherlinov as well. Cherlinov tested positive for COVID, I think it was, uh, and also uh, Gerald Asamoa. Uh, but some guys on the bench, Sane, Sane just had a baby uh, after the game, I think it was, or just at the at the end or something like that. Um, Paulson's obviously back in there. Flick, Idrizi, pretty much the same. Uh, bench other than than Vinheim in this one, so it's good to see that he was back in there. And um, yeah, Matriciani probably was the weak link in the lineup, uh, but I think he did better this game than he did last game. Would you not agree? <laughs> Maybe I not. mean, I, I, th I thought he was I thought he was kind of sketchy at times in this game too. He got caught on the sure. ball a lot. One of the goals for sure. I, I don't know if I would draw that much of a distinction between the two, maybe, but okay. um, I just think I think it's a good thing that, you know, yeah, even though he was starting in this one, you look at the bench and you have Iden for at least the second consecutive match on the bench, also Roundful and Vinheim. So, like, yep. you have just, I mean, not maybe not 100% up to pace and certainly not, you know, maybe in the best form for being out for a while, but you're getting back to the point where you're going to have a full complement of right backs um, available to you, um, you know, uh, to say, uh, nothing of OEM whenever he is ultimately back. And I think there's still a chance that he's going to be back, you know, before the end of the season. So um, yeah. get him in the last couple, maybe. Sambo in the house. Good to see you as always. Uh, yeah, it's um, an interesting lineup. I mean, like, I mean, I agree with you 100% on, on, all, on all that stuff. And we'll see how it, how it, how the game ends here. It says, um, you know, it's interesting that Buskins mentioned this after the game that he says, you know, some people want to talk about Chalanolu and Matriciani's performance. And he's like, look, look, look. I'm not going to criticize them at all. They're here. They deserve to be here. Let them play. They're young. Let them figure it out. Uh, so you got to give him credit for that because he's backing his players up. Uh, Dirk's in there saying, uh, um, our coach defended Mishisiani in the press conference. Exactly what I was just saying. Uh, very young. Doesn't He doesn't look young. <laughs> exactly this pair. Uh, and then uh, Doug says, nice to see you. Seemingly no quit yeah. in the team. Yeah. yeah and, and unfortunately, we have seen managers kind of, you know, blame the squad. Um over the last couple seasons, we've seen yeah. that from Schalke managers, um, you know, saying like, what do you expect me to do and various things. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, Bus I mean, everyone loves Buskins, you know, he's a club guy and like, you know, he's backing his people and that's probably his job. You know, he's not going to be yep. like the coach long term anyway. So his job is to just keep the morale high and keep everyone focused and block out the noise and just get the job done the last couple of weeks here. Yeah, I think he's even said he didn't want to be the full-time coach, even though all the fans want him to be, right? Uh, I know Rovin Short was interviewing some coaching candidates, and none of them were Booskins or a bunch of other guys. So we'll see how that works out. But uh, looking at the home team, 
Barons was in goal. Uh, one of the Pfeiffer brothers, and I'm joking. Uh, Pfeiffer in the fence. Teets very impressed by him. Kempe Luca Pfeiffer, who's one of the top strikers in the league with with Teets. Uh, Giasulu, Subiek, Bader, Skarke, Holland, and Manu. Um, I have to say that with this lineup, we knew that Teets and and Pfeiffer were the big men, right? They both had double digit yeah. goals this league. They were scoring a lot. But outside of those two, I was very impressed by Manu. Braden Manu was very impressive on the right-hand side to me. I don't know what your thoughts on the lineup was. Yeah, I, I agree. I think um, maybe Kemp, uh, like you could you could shout out as well at a decent performance in the midfield. But be, yeah, I think a lot of the midfield performances from them were roughly the same. Manu, um, kind of danger adjacent more than directly involved in the danger um too consistently but was a nuisance was popping up in dangerous areas just couldn't ultimately you know receive the pass at the right moment or find the right combination of things to kind of finish it off but um had a good first half and then at various times in the second half um popped up a couple times again and it looked like he was he was close a couple times he had some nice footwork and you know nice runs and everything yeah you know those are good shouts too um i thought this was a <laughs> this first half was very very chaotic uh, but yeah some of those guys you know i'm gonna put this out right now uh, if if we are fortunate to be promoted, two guys I would not mind putting or keeping track on are both Teets, who I think is a phenomenal uh, attacker, and Manu, because we have an issue with the right side. You know, uh, yeah, Drexler does a great job, um, but Manu, I like I like his flexibility, what he does, good crosser of the ball, and Teets, he's very similar to a Bulter, uh, maybe a little bit better of a skill set than Bulter, right? Uh, doesn't look as awkward as, as Bulter, but I think he would be a good complement as a striker and eventually maybe depending how his progression is next year maybe could eventually take over for someone like uh, Simo Toroto if no one if we don't have anyone in the in the running assuming Toroto is going to be there next year which all indications are uh but yeah it was um uh, interesting to first half um <laughs> early on it was all Darmstadt I mean you can argue that the whole first half was Darmstadt but the first 10 minutes or so was Darmstadt I mean wave after wave of chances against us and it was like almost reminiscent of the first game we played them when they blitzed us for nothing. Um, they did eventually get a goal. Uh, Teets again, I think it was, I think it was Manu who got the assist on this one. I can't remember who got the assist, but Teets got the header off the post. Forza came back to him. And he put it back the rebound, but one, nothing just like that. Uh, I want to say it was Kaminsky it was, and who was it? I think it was, was, Scar- I think it was 27 who Scar- had the assist. Okay, Scar- okay, yeah. 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 Um, but it, it, he he lined up perfectly in between. I want to say Tiao and Kaminsky, and I I want to say Kaminsky is the one that faulted that one. Um, hard to say. I, yeah, if I remember correctly, I think I, I mean I don't know. I think I think it may have been Tiao more. He he didn't. He was um in the box. He wasn't really putting a body on his guy, and then kind of like lost track of of where he was exactly in the ball. And he also I think misread the flight of the ball potentially and didn't. I mean, so it also yeah, it, it kind of came in the space. Both of them, I guess you know, obviously could have been closer to teats at the time because it fell in between them but um ultimately i thought a pretty nice ball in and then well finished off but uh yeah disappointing defending on that one that was uh, that was maybe the, the weaker goal i think but yeah yeah no I, I i agree about that um and i was like shit here we go uh we looked terrible from the beginning from the defensively i should say but you know i always want to see what the reaction is going to be in the reaction i thought was very well uh the team Instantly put a, an attack forward within a few minutes. Um, Simon Toroto got a goal uh, first of the game. He didn't celebrate because he's like, this is game on, boys. Let's go, uh, which I found it interesting because usually he starts off with his, you know, his celebration, but didn't in this one. 1-1. One, one. I love the reaction from the team. Thoughts on, on how the team reacted so quickly after a goal, especially when we're getting dominated in that first 10 minutes or so. Yeah, I thought that was interesting too. Um, it, when that happened, I, w- I actually ended up looking up Toronto's history because I was like, he didn't play for Darmstadt at some point, did he? Because I'm like, I don't remember that. I know, being, I know. I didn't say stop thing. that he made. And I was like, maybe he's not celebrating because, you know, it's doing the thing where, you know, you don't celebrate against your former team. But yeah, that's not the case. He just, yeah, you said back to business, I guess, um, which I kind of respect. Sure, if that's what it was, like, you know, I, I don't mind that attitude. But yeah, um, yeah, obviously, obviously a good response. You're on the road in an important game. Um, you go down early and you've kind of been up against it early as well. They were, they were very much focusing. I felt like on the Trishiani side of the field early on, consistently throwing it down the left-hand side and then very effectively, um, switching the play to me. That was actually, um, uh, kind of the most effective 
mechanism for them to actually create, like, you know, get the right angles and create the chances was um, they would be down one of the sides and find a way to whip it to the side of the field quickly and, and you know, uh, catch the defense out. And that was, that was, I don't know, some long balls and everything as well. But um, yeah, to, to make it one, one uh, right after that was, was nice to see. And it's Toronto again, dude. I mean, there's only so much you could say about it after a while, but it just, it could, everything that was advertised and more, what is he at now? Like 24, something like that. He's getting close yeah. to like a quarter of a century, I think, on the season. So, yeah, yeah. nuts, nuts. Uh, I want to give credit on this goal to, to the captain, Danny Latza. I thought he easily could have passed it to Bulter on the play who was off sides. He didn't. He passed it over wide to Matriciani, or excuse me, Salazar. And Salazar is the one to cross it in. Bulter with the flick on back to Toronto. We've seen it so many times this year. Um, but you know, Donnie Lotz, I'm gonna give full credit on that goal too, because it could have easily been he, he picked the right place person to pass to. So that they scored there. Uh it, it, right it makes me question like whether that, that's something that they've drawn up specifically, um, like in the in the coaching staff, and like that's that, that's a position that they try to get into, or if that's just sort of like Bolter's natural inclination, because there's so many times that he does take that near post position and it looks like he's almost never looking to actually score himself. He's constantly trying to like flick it and get that second ball. Um, yeah, and there's been a number, as you said, a number of examples of this season. So it feels like that's not happening by accident, obviously, at yeah. this point. This is at least the fifth goal I've seen where Bolter's flicked it onto Torta, at least. And I want to I want to go back through all the goals and find out, but it was, it's been a lot. It's been, looked like it's been a, a, a play of sorts, like you say, not just uh, just a coincidence that it happens over and over and over again. Uh, but 1-1 at that point, um, no celebrations there. Uh, I want to say it was in a... I don't remember what he meant. How many? There's so many goals in this first half. Uh, but the second goal for us would come uh, this time. Salazar again, I believe, uh, or maybe it was Bolter. I can't remember. So many goals now. But yeah, it was Salazar. Toroda. 29th minute, Salazar. Yeah. Yes. With the ball. Beautiful header by Toroda. Toroda forcing himself to get that header. Beats the defender. Literally beats him up. Uh, scores the goal. Gets a celebration this time. I and mean, he knew. I think it was we're, we're heading for a big game today. And. Uh, when I got the first goal in, you know, it was a tough game, but he got the lead all of a sudden, so he's celebrating there. Two to one at that point. Um, up to yeah. that point, it's it was two shots on goal, two goals. We had nothing else. After that. It was all darn set in terms of offensive output, I think. And that play was so funny to me because it was very kind of reminiscent of like, uh, you know, an American football situation where it's just – you, you throw it up and the wide receiver goes and gets it. Like, you know, he's covered. It's not like he's open yeah. off of a route run. He just, my guy is better in the air. Yeah. Um, and so credit, I mean, it's a nice ball from Zalatar, but it's not like he played such an incisive ball. That's what created the goal. Correct. It was just that he happened to see Tirada in the box with space, just kind of one-on-one -on -one with his man and said, I back my guy more than I back the defender. I'm going to put it up there. And Tirada went up and got it. And that's a very good header. Like yeah. hits it with pace, yeah. places it well back to the corner. I mean, like, you know, and that's the kind of play like Zalazar clearly is justified in making that decision because that's exactly yeah. what his, his guy goes and does for him. Two to one, the 30th minute. Uh, I'm like, okay, here we go. Here we go. And, you know, credit to Darmstadt. We reacted after their first goal really quickly. So did they when we took the lead. Uh, and another good header you talked about. This play kind of start with Skark on the left-hand side. Give it to Teets. Teets, well, I'm telling you, great place. Finds his man wide. I think it was Manu wide. Uh, goes into the box. Manu finds it back to him. Great header on him. Matriciani kind of lost them in the play there. Tiao, you could say he's a blame. I, I want to say Matriciani is more to blame on that goal. Uh, but great place header. I don't. I don't think if Frazel could have or anybody would have stopped. That was really perfectly placed. Two two in thirty second minute. I'm like here we go. Swiss cheese defense both sides. So I guess my read of this defensively from Schalke, um Tietz is making a trailing run on like the far side of the box. And um, it's a run that because of Matriciani is watching the ball. So he has his back to Teets and it's a trailing run from Teets anyway. So he's not really in Matriciani's like direct mark, in my opinion. And I think Drexler like sees this run. It just kind of makes the decision to not follow it. Yeah. Um, and then true. at the last minute, Teets jumps in front of Matriciani and knocks the ball in. But I, I think Matriciani was just unsighted the entire way, like didn't know he was making that run. And then Drexler freaks out afterwards and is like, you know, like making a scene of like, you know, I think Matriciani making that mistake. But like to me that, and I don't know, maybe he was like yelling at Matriciani saying man on and he didn't react to it or something. And that's yeah, why he was upset. Yeah. Who knows what the situation was, but um, to, to be, you could say, yeah, he maybe should have had his head on a swivel, better situational awareness or whatever. But like, to me, that's a little bit harsh to be, that upset at Patriciani for it personally. Sure. But yeah I, yeah, I think, yeah, he was the guy that, that ultimately was there. 
and you did see how upset Drexler was on that. Um, I remember on that goal specifically as well that the uh, the the Schalke commentator was saying that even Tia was ball watching during the whole time, and and Matriciani as well was their ball. They're ball watching, and and I guess Drexler to the point probably was too, and just calling out the guy instead of following the guy, whatever. And so um, Dirk saying lack of experience. It, yeah, that's, it was that's a decidedly a like Salif Sane moment from Drexler. In my <laughs> yes, you know what I mean? Yes. Like where like he had some kind of involvement in that, and then just says it was you know that's like, you. <laughs> 2-2 two, two at that point. I thought we we're gonna be going to halftime by that score. Uh you got Teets versus Toronto going for the for the triple here. Uh and then Bulter decides to get his act on it. Um wonderful goal by him. I mean, really he gets the ball out wide, makes a move on the defender in the box, and got the ball, got the shot through three defenders. I mean, three defenders and past the goalie, deflected off one of the defenders goes past the goalie, but Bulter creating his own shot, really, you know, as we say all the time. Like Gretzky says, if you don't put a shot on target, you're not going to score. And so he did that, and it went in. Uh, and big way to score in the 42nd minute to make it 3-2 going into halftime. But chaotic first half, Jack. Chaotic. Yeah, I mean, I think what we've learned from the last two matches is that um, something about cutbacks on that right-hand side really uh, really opens things up for us in terms of the goal scoring. He did Curl last week on his you know sensational solo effort. And then Bolter here, a um, little bit more lucky I, w- I would say um you know it beats his first man and then takes that second touch and fires through two defenders and the goalkeeper and it somehow bounces through all of them and just kind of sneaks in i think the goalkeeper partially unsighted potentially um yeah. with the traffic that was there but you know you like the initiative as you said shooters yeah. you know shooters gonna shoot and uh bolter obviously trying to get on the act after uh, he's seeing his his buddy uh notch two in the first half yeah yeah so three two at a half time uh obviously First half was all offense. There's no defense in this first half. Both teams' defenses were pretty poor. Um, but Chalka very clinical, right? Basically, three opportunities in the first half, three goals. Uh, really, Darmstadt had the better of the chances in the first half. They hit a post, I think, I believe, as well. Uh, Luka, Tietz was everywhere in the first half. Manu was everywhere. Luca Pfeiffer was a little quiet in the in the first half. Uh, but overall, I thought both offenses or both defenses were lacking. Um, another, you know, we talked about lots of picking up the injury. Paulson would come on for for Latza, and then the question yeah, came a, in the, in the that was half. early too. That was like before the twenty fifth minute, even I think that was that before was like the, the yeah before it was on one at that point I think yeah. Um, and so you know one of the questions in the chat was who comes in for Latza now? Is it Paulson or is it Flick? Um, obviously Paulson and Itakura Itakura is uh, is going to be there. Paulson is a good complement to Itakura because he's a stay at home guy and, and Itakura can push up a little more. But Flick is very good with Itakura as well. We've seen that mm-hmm. too. Do you have an inclination which way you'd rather go? I mean, at this point, I guess they're both fine. Um, um, first of all, to give, credit to, pa- to give credit to Paulson, I thought Paulson played actually quite well when he yeah. came on in this game. I thought that, you know, what was that, 70-minute cameo or so that he had um, was actually one of his better performances in recent memory. I thought he was I thought he was quite solid. Um, that being said, um, you know, maybe this question was when it was getting posed um, after Flick had just come in and made like an appearance or two. Yeah. Would have been more of a toss up, but like you've also had like a pretty demonstrated run of flick performances at this point yeah. to be like pretty confident that he can do a job. So, yeah. to me, once again, it just comes down to like stylistic preference and what you're looking for in the match. I'm sorry that I've given that answer before on previous podcasts, but it's what I really believe. It's like, yeah, I think one of them is slightly more talented and capable in possession and uh, going forward, and I think one of them is slightly more capable, you know, defensively screening for his back line. Um, and, uh, you know, Paulson, I think is actually the last couple of times we've seen him shown, I think better offensive performances yeah. and being able to link up with people and did that actually quite well in this game a couple of times. Um, but yeah, that'd be my general answer. If it's a game you think you can control and you want that, you know, passing, calming influence of possession, it's flick. And if, you know, you're up against the ropes, you just want a physical bruiser. who's going to chase things down and make things difficult and win some balls and, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's Paulson. And I think in this game, Paulson was the right choice because we needed that. Because after that chaotic first half, you needed someone's going to be in there, kind of push things around in that middle and really try to get, regain control. And I thought he, like you said, like you mentioned, he did a pretty good job about that. And Flick did, a, did a decent when he came in as well. Uh, but three two at a half time, chaotic first half. Uh, second half started just as chaotic as the first half. Uh, Tease goes and gets his hat trick in the first minute. Called it off. Um, first off, you know, I watched, I thought maybe you're going to call a foul because him and uh, Tiao went head, shoulder to shoulder. Tiao goes down and they scored a goal past uh, Frazzo. But upon review, he was offsides, the correct call. Uh, so they brought it back. And on the ensuing kick from Frazzo, 
it goes down the pitch. Um, somehow the ball gets to Tarota. He, he does a, like an overhead kick over the top. And is that the, was the one where he – trying to remember which goal it was. Which one? No, Tarota got the assist on the last one. So uh, Bolter came in and scored a goal, made it and just you know right after that off goal. It may by, have been um, Paulson that had the header on that on that goal. Yes, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. But yeah. Exactly. Like you, you, you I think. Now. I mean, the second half starts crazily. You think that that they score and, and basically tie it up. Um, I actually thought uh, going back to the, the 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 disallowed goal for a second. Like initially, I thought they called it as a foul on, on Tiao because I mean I, I think that would have been kind of a hard call to make. But he to me it does look like he intentionally shoulder lunges um, as opposed to like incidental contact that kind of thing. And Tiao yeah. did get knocked down by it. But anyway. Um, yeah, and then to have it go down the other end, I th- like I think it was I think it was Paulson heads it over the top. Yes, um, it was very sunny to start the second half, and it looked like maybe the defender kind of lost it or misjudged it temporarily um, in the sun. And then uh, the goalkeeper kind of comes out, but but uh, Bolter his first touch is off his chest with momentum, which Beautiful just takes them, yeah. him completely by the goalkeeper, and the goalkeeper is like totally off his line. Yes, then, yes. And he just knocks it home. So yeah, um, great play. Yeah, it's just a heads up play from Bolter, a good effort, and you know, jumps on it and quickly finishes it before Darmstadt really know what's going on. Um crazy pace. And and Bolter just looked up for it in the second half, especially yes, the first like 10 minutes or so. He was yeah. like all over the place. Yeah. So t- uh four two at that point, uh double for a brace for Teets, uh Tarota and Bolter at this point now. And the question was who's gonna get the hat trick first? Was it gonna be Tarota or Bolter? Um, I don't know, 10 minutes later or so. I don't know, sixty first minute, sixty second minute. This is where the play where the ball goes. Torota overhead kicks it to the corner where uh, Bolter chases it down, makes a move on Pfeiffer, the defender, not the attacker. Uh, comes in, and he's at an angle, and he's like, I already got two. I'm just going to take a shot. Beautifully left-footed shot, pat, far corner, gets past the uh, goalkeeper. 5-2 at that point. You know he was feeling at that point. He was celebrating like crazy, going right to the fans. Um, not the greatest of goals by him, but he'll take it all day. I'll take it all day. 5-2 at that point. At that point, I kind of breathe a sigh of relief. I'm like, Okay, I think we got this game. I think we got it. Uh, but man. It, that's got to be one of the funnier assists Torada has rescor- uh, has recorded in his career. I think, as you said, yeah, like the sort of the, the Cirque du Soleil overhead kick, um, the clearance almost into the corner, and then what did I tell you, dude? It's that cutback from the right hand side <laughs> once again. Uh, you know, Ida Curl last game, Bolter for the second time. This one gets to the baseline and just leaves his guy, you know, for dead. Breaks his ankles, cuts the side, and tight angle. And for some reason, like you know, Ida Curl was able to finish that. Um, last week and Bolter from an even tighter angle this time, I think, kind of on the ground. It digs he cut out of the corner, and uh, yeah, like we said, he, yeah, he absolutely was feeling it at that point for sure. And uh, yeah. you know, and, and you know what, I'm happy for him too because Tarada is obviously getting a lot of the you know the plaudits and has had some of those big matches. And um, Bolter's had a ridiculously productive season um, in terms of goals and assists. The, the total goal involvement, direct goal involvement for Tarada and Bolter this season combined is absurd. I think it's like over. But there, hey, there it is, right? It's there like, it is. Is like over, over 50, 20, probably. 24, yeah, 24 like? goals, four assists for Tarota, 10 goals, nine assists for Bulter. I mean, they are the dynamic duo. Uh, you know, we want to give Tarota all the credit, obviously, for all the goals, but Bulter has got double digit goals, got nine assists. I mean, he's had yeah, so a fantastic I just, season. I was happy to see him get the hat trick this time just yes. to get a little yes. extra shine, you know, yeah. whatever. But yeah, I mean, five goals from your, your two men up front, it's uh pretty great and that's why all season long i think you and i'm kind of stuck with that pairing being the pairing as long as it's productive you got to roll with it and uh they've been they've been brilliant yeah i mean at times we said we joked about uh when Cherlinov and perringer were, were doing well and we we're like oh maybe it should be them we're like no they're, they're the one b it has to be turtle bolter because they're they're our bread and butter and sure enough we stuck with them and they're they're, they're paying us back for it honestly uh dirk saying darmshed was a great team pushed hard played hard never give up they also have a shot of promotion. Yeah, they're they're a good team with a lot of talented players, as we mentioned. Um, but five two, big big victory. As I mentioned, also our friends at Nuremberg did us a favor, drawing. I don't know if they did us a favor; they did themselves a favor, uh, drawing Bremen, which is great for a great result for us. One one, great result for for Nuremberg. We uh, look at the results of this, uh, the stats, right? I mean, twenty one to thirteen, not surprising. Darmstadt looked the better of the created better of opportunities against us. We were just far more clinical. Uh, man, for I think the first three, four goals were all our chances in the game at that point. Yeah. Um, both teams have seven shots on target. Five of them go in for us. Possession fairly even. Corners fairly even. Passes fairly even. It's a, a pretty even game, I think. Um, yeah, and it was weird because I think we had like more possession in the first <laughs> half too, when we only had like the couple shots, and they had like over ten shots in the first half. And you yeah, know, and then I don't know. Yeah, it was a weird game in that respect. 
Um, but as you said, clinical, um, you know, the two guys up front, uh, making sure of that, making the most of their opportunities. And, um, you know, some of those shot numbers, I feel like, you know, especially the second half, a little bit inflated in terms of their importance. Like I thought yeah. Darmstadt really uh, resorted to the aerial ball a lot in the second yes. half and the long ball. They had a lot of possession, but that's because they would just kind of have it, you know, a little bit past the halfway line and launch one into the box and then it get recycled out and they kind of do that. They weren't really creating a lot of these from, you know, well-worked um, opportunities in the second half, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, once again, to go on the road against uh, a good opponent and get this kind of result, um, you know, despite, you know, decent performance from Darmstadt in the first half in particular uh, is, is great. And, you know, at, at part of this five run, uh, win run, um, even better. It's all there for us in the final I, four. I love the hockey analogy about the McDavid and Drysaddle of the Bundesliga. Uh, I love that. If you, if you get it, you get it. Uh, but it's, they're a great combination. Uh, both Torota and Bulter are, um, and you can argue, you know, you know, Tietz and, and, and Pfeiffer are pretty good themselves, but you know, we got the, obviously the better number. Werder Bremen's have, have a pretty good duo as well that we got to worry about next week. Uh, huge game top spiel against, uh, Bremen, but uh, yeah, it's been a, uh, a crazy game, crazy last few games, really. Uh, looking at the table now, well, I'm trying to at least. <laughs> uh, we're in first place by two points over to Bremen. St. Pauli, who drew this weekend against Sandhausen, I believe it was, um, they're three points behind us. We got five points between us and fourth place. So we're in a pretty safe position in terms of promotion at the moment. But a big game against Verde Bremen this weekend. It is. We got two huge games this weekend uh, outside of obviously our top spiel, which is a big game. Um, the other big game is uh, St. Pauli and Darmstadt three gets four. So we could have some big separation or not could get closer. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, listen, it, it we're in a good position. It's a position that we've wanted to be in all season long, but at the same time, there's still only two results separates, you know, first from fifth where Nuremberg yeah. is right now. And we've seen how quickly things can change just in this last couple of games with us putting the run together and suddenly, you know, going from yeah. fifth place, wherever we were to the top of the table, we yeah. drop a couple of matches goes the wrong way. We can suddenly be looking at like, you know, that third, fourth battle or whatever. Um, and or maybe we're right there with Nuremberg, you know, on the final match of the season, as we've kind of been joking about this entire time. So, um, yeah, we, we've we've done brilliantly to get ourselves in this position kind of against the odds, the way the season was going at the time. We made some changes and um, you hope you can keep it going because, like we said, it's not mathematically sealed up yet and, and things can happen quick. Where It's a gauntlet at the end of the season. Um, a lot of good teams playing each other. Apparently, uh, a Verter player is already throwing Gauntlet down and making some statements uh, that they're going to win in this game. But uh, yeah, it's going to be chaotic. I mean, like best case scenario, right? Is that I don't know what the best case scenario. Obviously, we win. I don't know who I want to win the St. Pauli Darm shot or what the result's going to be because I want to have. I guess I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I would want. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be an interesting. One Eric says Darm shot St. Pauli draw would be magic. Yeah. That's true, I guess. You get you partly want that. You also partly want Darmstadt to lose so they can be further away from us, so we can be secure in the top three. But I want to be top spot, one or two. But big game, big game. Two big players on this team. Two teams who are trying to get back to the Bundesliga after getting relegated last year. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a dogfight, both games really. Uh, and then Nuremberg doing their thing as they did at the end of last season, where they went on a big run, ten games at the end of the season. Don't forget about them. We could results could go our way, but it may come down to the last weekend. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully, it doesn't. Hopefully, lock it up before then. But uh, yeah, it's it's been chaotic. Um, we'll see what happens next year. But like you mentioned, we have a lot of players that are loan, loaned or new, and so we got this winning mentality. It's not that same mentality as before. Lots of rumors also that we talked about. I mean, Harit last week, the Marseille are really starting to look maybe not pick him up because he's got like six goals for them or something. He's doing decent for them this year. So we'll see. A uh, lot to play for, but big game. Go ahead. Yeah, and last thing on this game at Darmstadt, real quick, shout out to the traveling Schalke support yes. as well. Um, because that's not that's not the shortest of of uh, of away kind of distances either. Because what is that? Isn't Darmstadt kind of in the Frankfurt area, sort of? I mean, sure. it's a few yeah. it's a few hours is all I'm saying. You know, it's not like it's yeah. a local derby or something like that. Yeah. So for them to be down there, have their corner sort of corner of the stadium, and they were dominating the noise and sort of the the, the ambience. They were you know in the corner jumping up and down with the flags the entire time. So um, on the broadcast, it was pretty much all Schalke and like nothing else, which was fun to see on on the road. So you can hear to, it. Uh, you can hear yeah. it on the telecast as well, which is awesome. Um, good to see Edwin. I'm a shout out Edwin too because he was saying like, hey, we need to get back to our watch parties here. 
uh, maybe if the, if the season say we need to get back to it for sure. I got a big flag I can bring to a nice Velton's flag I can bring to a watch party. But yeah, it's been a while since we've done that. So uh, yeah, some was saying weeks ago nobody believed, but that's me. I'm nobody. <laughs> <laughs> what about me? <laughs> I didn't believe with Gramatzas. I and I, I was skeptical about the Briskins thing, but you know here we are. So hopefully yeah, we can, yeah. Uh, we can keep it going. Yeah, no, who who knew? I, and I, I forget, it may have been Edwin or someone who tweeted out where like the the biggest biggest thing that uh, the Svitalika didn't want is, is Gramosis get fired because he gets fired, Buskins comes in, and we go on a tear. Uh, the goal differential is ridiculous. I mean, if it ever came down to a draw, or whatever, we are by far the superior team. Goal second fourth. best defense to Hamburg, I think, but then best and offense at the moment. Best offense the yeah. by six goals, five goals, six goals. So plus minus is like almost double anybody else, which is ridiculous. Except for Hamburg. Hamburg is doing pretty well because their defense is pretty good. But um, yeah, it's uh, coming down to the end here. Four games left. Um, let's see. Last comments here. Doug says, I have a hard time finding the games. Any advice to watch the Verta game? I'm hoping ESPN Plus picks it up. I really do because I couldn't find any stream as well. I had to watch the Verder uh, Nuremberg match this past weekend because I couldn't even I couldn't find the Schalke game myself, um, other than listening to it on Schalke. But um, yeah, I mean the most reliable source for us this year has just been the One Football app. But even that's been spotty at times. You've had issues with it probably three or four times at least this season. I've had issues with it a couple of times. Um, we luckily have the Schalke TV subscription that we were talking a lot about earlier in yes. the year. Um, now, so we don't have an issue with that. We can watch them on replay. But uh, yeah, for those of you who are still trying to find them, you know, the live streams, or whatever, I, you know, I, I apologize because it is, it is tough. And we also have a wild card to quote Charlie Day from uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Wild card, Dirk. On if you uh, look at what his comment is uh, on Facebook, he will uh, provide you with a nice way to watch the game if you want. Uh, but I won't give this last thing away in case people are listening to the FT, FCC or whatever <laughs> listening. But uh, I did watch the game because of because of Dirk. Uh, so if you can't watch TS Not TV, go on uh, U- Shaka's USA fan Facebook group there uh, and find the link there. Uh, but other than that, we'll do our best. Uh, game is early Saturday. I think it's a 7.30 game my time, 6.30 Chicago time, Jack. Um, try to do a live stream. We're going to do live stream whether it's uh, – Audio, a video or not, audio or video, it doesn't matter. We're going to try to figure a way to do this. Uh, watch in misery together. Uh, hold on, misery. And enjoy. Enjoy. What time is uh, what time is Imola going down? I got my Formula One calendar out here because this weekend's a Formula That's One a weekend good point. as well. That's a good point. It could be early as well. can be as early as the uh, Australia one, right? But, uh, yeah. So, all right. Um, anything to wrap this one up? The two players of the game, no, according just... to Buskins, is Sane and Latza for injury and the baby. So, good shot there. I no, I just I just want to shout out the team because regardless of what happens between now and the end of the season, and and like I said, it's not it's not sealed up that, that there could be heartbreak in store for us once again. But even if that even if that comes to pass, this has just been a fun team to watch and a fun team to support, and that's something that we've been desperately needing over the last couple of years. So uh, yeah. just my appreciation to all these guys, as I mentioned earlier on the podcast, like some of them short term commitments, loan players, um, but clearly you know giving you know giving it their all trying to make it happen have some personal pride as well um care about winning and and they've 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 put on a show for us at times this season and they've made it interesting down the stretch so i'm just appreciative uh of that yeah uh we haven't had a victory monday in a long time prior to this season i felt like uh so it's nice to get back to doing that nice to see the team winning again like you mentioned it feels good to be able to watch the team doing well as they are this season no matter what happens uh and one of the night the the nicer things I saw today in terms of Schalke was that, you know, Oyan is a player that we have, as we have on loan at, at right now. And so they asked him, what's your, what's your plans for next season? He goes, if we get promoted, I'm staying with Schalke. And we're like, Oh, that's what I want to hear, baby. That's what I want to hear. Uh, he's a, so we'll he's a, yeah. He's absolutely a Bundesliga level left back yes. too, in my opinion. Yes. So be happy for that. Yeah. I mean, like, listen, we're used to, uh, we're very used to five game streaks. It's just that recently they've been five game loss streaks to start the season, like in multiple campaigns recently. <laughs> yeah. It's been rare that we've had, you know, a five game winning streak. So that's, it's a nice, nice change of uh, fortune. Uh, yes, but uh, make sure you get your uh, fight to league ready this weekend. Top spiels all the way around. Obviously, St. Pauli against Darmstadt and then the top spiel, Werder against us. Uh, it's going to be a lot to play for here. It could be uh, a decider or it could make it even tighter. We'll find out here. But, uh, Let's wrap this bad boy up. We're getting here around the quarter hour mark. Jack, uh, anyone to shout outs or uh, where can our followers find you on social media? At JM Mangan, J M M A N G A N on Twitter. 
Very good. Uh, as always, I'm going to give a shout out to the to the chat. Very lively tonight. Uh, good to see everyone here on the Victory Monday podcast. Uh, let's let's all get let's get up for this next game here. Big big game here. So uh, as always, you can follow me at r underscore k h a r m a n. Uh, and until the next podcast comes or the next live stream, we'll catch you soon. Glugauf. Thank <laughs> you.